So the question says, the polygon below represents a regular octagon. Now before we get into the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's begin. Let's read it one more time. It says, the polygon below represents a regular octagon. So this word octagon tells us something unique about this figure below. Now with an octagon, we know we're going to have eight sides and eight angles. Let's label the sides. So we can label this side A. We can have B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So we've labeled our eight sides. Now let's identify the eight angles. We know the eight angles are going to be at each point. So, so for A, we know this is going to be angle A. For B, this is angle B. For C, C is going to encompass from this side to this side. So even though there are two lines in between this, all of this equals to C. Now we have D, we have E. For angle F of this octagon, we're going to encompass this side and angle Z. For angle G, it's the same thought process. We're going to encompass angle Y and this angle on this side. And for angle H, we know that's going to be angle X. So we know these eight angles are all going to be equal because these are the eight angles in this octagon. Now it says calculate the following angles. You must show your work in. For part A, they want us to calculate angle X. Now where is angle X? We can see angle X is right here, and we know angle X is one of the angles that makes up the eight angles that is in this octagon. Therefore, to calculate angle X, there's a formula we're going to use, and that formula is going to be N minus 2 multiplied by 180 degrees divided by N. And this formula is used to measure one interior angle in a regular polygon. So because we know angle X is one interior angle of this octagon, we're just going to use this formula. Now, N is going to represent the number of sides of the polygon. And we know we're dealing with an octagon, therefore we're going to have eight sides. So we can say N equals eight. Now when we start to solve for this, we're just going to substitute 8 for n. We can say 8 minus 2 multiplied by 180 degrees over 8, which is n. Now when you start to simplify this, 8 minus 2 is going to give you 6 multiplied by 180 degrees over 8. So when you put 6 times 180 degrees divided by 8, you're going to get 135 degrees. Therefore, if one interior angle of this regular polygon equals to 135 degrees, then we know that angle X is going to equal 135 degrees. This is going to be our answer. Remember, an octagon has eight interior angles, and we just found that one interior angle equals 135 degrees in an octagon. Therefore, we know an octagon is going to have eight 135 degree angles because there are eight interior angles in an octagon. Therefore, for part A, we know angle X is going to equal 135 degrees. Now for part B, they want us to find angle Y. So where is angle Y? Well, we see angle Y is right here in this situation. So how do you think we're going to find angle Y? We should be able to see that angle Y will not be 135 degrees 
because we would have to add angle Y plus this angle to get one interior angle of this octagon, which is 135 degrees. So in order to find angle Y, there is something we're gonna have to do. Now we have to look at the line that separates these two angles. So if we look at this line that separates these two angles, that line is gonna be GC, right? And this line, if we pay close attention and we ignore this line, we can see that this line cuts this octagon symmetrically. Now, if we was to redraw this octagon, I know it's not the best octagon, but it's gonna work. <laughs> so we know the line GC is gonna be this line right here. And we can see it cuts the octagon in half. And because this is the line of symmetry, we know what is on one side is gonna be reflected on the opposite side. Therefore, if this is angle Y, then we know this side right here is also angle Y. Do you see that? Which means these two angles are equal. So let me just erase this one second. Therefore, if this is, let's say 20 degrees, we know this is 20 degrees. We're just gonna write in angle Y. Now we still don't know what angle Y is, but well, we know angle G is gonna add up to 135 degrees because each interior angle of this octagon is 135 degrees. Therefore, all we're gonna to have to do is set up the equation to say Y plus Y equals 135 degrees. Let's set this up. We know Y plus Y equals angle G and we know angle G is one angle in this octagon therefore we can say Y plus Y equals 135 degrees because each interior angle of this octagon is 135 degrees now let's solve for Y Y plus Y is going to give us 2Y equals 135 degrees now we need to get y by itself, so we're gonna divide both sides by two. We know this two is gonna cancel out with this two. Now when we put 135 divided by two in our calculators, y is then gonna equal 67.5 degrees. So this is gonna be our answer for this problem. So we know y equals 67.5 degrees. Now for part C, they want us to find angle Z. So let's see what angle Z is. We know angle Z is right here. And we know angle Z is gonna be a part of angle F. Therefore, we know it is not 135 degrees because in order to get 135 degrees, we're gonna to have to add Z plus this angle. Now where angle Z is, we see there's a line that separates this and it is line FC. And because we have line FC, this forms a different polygon. I'm just gonna redraw this polygon. Now we must pay close attention to this. We know this is gonna form a trapezoid. So we're gonna ignore everything else except these four sides, which is CD, D, E, E, F, and F, C. Now we know this forms a trapezoid, but if we look at this, let's see if we know any angles. So they want us to find angle Z, but let's see if we know any more angles. Well, we know angle E and angle D is gonna be a part of the regular octagon, which means that these two angles are gonna be 135 degrees. And we know that because they help make up one of the interior angles of this octagon. Therefore, for angle E, we know it's gonna be 135. And also for angle D, we know it's 135. And if these two angles are equal in this trapezoid, we know this is gonna be an isosceles trapezoid, which means if these two angles are equal, then these two angles must be equal as well. 
So if this is going to be angle Z, we know this angle right here is also angle Z. So let's set up an equation to solve for angle Z. And the way we're going to do that is we know angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Therefore, we're going to say 135 degrees, which is angle D, plus 135 degrees, which is angle E, plus Z, plus Z is going to equal 360 degrees. So remember, angle Z is not angle F. Angle F is going to be angle Z plus this angle. So we cannot call angle Z angle F. So when we set this problem up, we know we have, that's angle, angle D and angle E. We have angle D plus angle E plus Z plus Z equals 360 degrees. Now we know angle D and angle E are each an interior angle of a regular octagon, which we know add up to 135 degrees because we just found that. So we're just going to substitute 135 degrees into this equation. We know angle D, 135 degrees plus 135 degrees for angle E plus Z plus Z equals 360 degrees. Now let's start to evaluate this. 135 plus 135, when we put that in our calculators, is going to give us 270 degrees plus Z plus Z is going to give us 2Z equals 360 degrees. Now remember, we want to get Z by itself, so we're going to carry 270 degrees over to the next side. We have 2z equals 360 degrees minus 270 degrees. 360 degrees minus 270 degrees is going to give us 90 degrees. Therefore, we have 2z equals 90 degrees. Now remember, we want to get z by itself. So to get z by itself, we're going to have to divide both sides by 2. When we divide both sides by 2, we know this 2 is going to cancel out with this 2. And 90 divided by 2 in our calculators is going to give us 45. Therefore, Z equals 45 degrees. This is going to be our answer for part C. Angle Z is therefore going to equal 45 degrees.